By now, it's pretty common knowledge that nighttime exposure to computer, tablet, and TV screens sabotage sleep. They emit light that stimulates sunlight, thus suppressing sleep hormones. There are even special glasses that you can purchase pretty cheaply on Amazon for about 10 bucks that block this most disruptive wavelengths, which is the blue light. However, plenty of daytime sunlight is vital for good sleep, and most of us don't get near enough. Research shows the average person spends less than an hour of day outside. Compare this to our ancestors that would literally spend all day outside working. For shift workers, it's even worse. So for all of you firefighters, nurses, police officers, and whoever else works those night shifts, thank you, but it's probably best to leave those shifts to the young ones. This lack of exposure to sunlight inhibits production of melatonin, a hormone that triggers the sleep cycle and puts us to sleep. Also remember that serotonin is converted into melatonin. So if you have a serotonin deficiency, think depression, it can make it even more difficult to get in a good night's sleep. Now you're tired, depressed, and can't sleep, and the cycle continues in a wonderfully perpetual cycle of never-ending torture. But thankfully, there's help. A Finnish rat study recently observed one group living under fluorescent lighting, hmm, sounds just like about everybody in America, right? We drive from our living box to our gym box, back to our living box, to our work box, back to our house box. We're all living in a bunch of boxes. All to rinse and repeat the next day. Anyway, the other group was exposed only to sunlight through windows every day. While both groups received the same duration of both light and darkness during the day or during the study, the rats exposed to sunlight produced significantly more melatonin. P.S. Check out my previous post on melatonin and breast cancer. Very interesting. So it's not that artificial light was detrimental, it simply wasn't strong enough. The sunlight was more than seven times brighter than the fluorescent light. Nature knows best. This is what boosted melatonin production. Researchers assert that variation of the light throughout the day from dusk to dawn also supports healthy melatonin production. Basically, it's better to have a little variation of the strength of light from the sun rising to midday to late afternoon as opposed to the constant light from their little boxes. So during a sunny day, lux levels, L-U-X, which measures the intensity of light, reached 50,000. Compare this to indoor lighting, which ranges in the mid from the mid or from the low to mid hundreds at the most. For most of human history, we have lived with natural light and it plays a significant role in the function of the body and the brain. Anyone who has suffered through insomnia and sleep deprivation understands the importance of sufficient quality sleep. Generally, we should get about six to eight hours, but preferably eight. And getting naps is a great way to help make up for a slight sleep deficiency, as long as they aren't too late in the day. A short 20 to 30 minute power nap is a great way to regenerate your lagging brain function. However, melatonin and our sleep-wake cycle, also, also called your circadian rhythm, are intertwined with every system in the body, affecting much more than how rested or tired we feel. Tons of studies point to the importance of a healthy sleep-wake cycle for overall immune, hormonal, and mental health, among other things. Remember, your body is like a complex spider web. Everything is connected to one another. And I talk about this in some of my other blogs, so check them out. For instance, one study found that women suffering from PMS showed chronically low melatonin levels. Just two hours a day of exposure to sunlight increased their melatonin levels and relieved their symptoms. Pretty sweet. Another German study showed subjects with mood imbalances exhibited higher or healthier serotonin levels after just one week of light therapy. And there's some pretty cheap options for light therapy products. Check out some of the links for the most common light therapy lamps I use in my office. And finally, another study showed subjects experienced a 160% increase of melatonin at night after just a half hour of exposure to bright light from a light box, not even going outside. It's not easy getting enough sunlight when you're indoors all day, working or going to school, but it's vital for healthy sleep, brain function, and metabolic function to get a night flight exposure as long as it's the right type of light. So some of the options are obvious. Spend as much time as you can outside, <clears throat> my personal favorite, favorite, but not always feasible. Eat lunch outside, go for a walk on your breaks, 
Maybe you can even work outside on your laptop if it's portable. But watch out for Wi-Fi wi um, signals around your Netherlands. Number two, if possible, work near windows where you get plenty of natural light. One study showed employees working near a window received twice as much light as their coworkers who didn't and thus enjoyed, enjoyed better and more sleep. Number three, if sufficient exposure to natural light isn't possible, indoor light therapy has been shown to help relieve sleep and mood imbalances. Again, check out my link to my favorite lamp. You want to get one that's at least 10,000 lux. So look for a light box that delivers plenty of lux and is big enough for sufficient exposure. The Center for Environmental Therapeutics provides criteria for purchasing a reliable light box, which they recommend using for at least a half hour in the morning. I often recommend at least two 30 minute sessions per day, or just kind of leave it on all day long. Not a bad thing. So let your light shine on or the sh light shine on you. Anyway, I'm Dr. Craig Mortensen. Be healthy, be happy.